All right, let's get into uh, the stocks today. Kick it off with the stock of the day. I thought we'd take a look at Fortescue, uh, the massive iron ore producer, uh, basically a pure iron ore play. December quarter production update out today. Joining its peers, flagging pressure from labour shortages, supply chain constraints. Uh, this, as it reports, a 2% rise in uh, second quarter iron ore shipments, though the uh, slightly upbeat report was somewhat offset by um, a, a drop of uh, backdrop of stricter environmental and production controls, as well as the ongoing property sector crisis in China, which continues to weigh on the outlook for steel demand. Uh, looking ahead for you, guidance for shipments <coughs> remain unchanged, um, down 72 cents uh, below $20 a share. Um, Chris, what do you what do you make of Fortescue's update and? Uh, the stock price at the moment. Uh, a couple of months ago, everyone was doom and gloom about the iron ore price dropping to $80. It's just quietly come well back up above 100 bucks a ton, has it? Yeah, it certainly has, Koshy. I think it was November it hit those lows, and uh, yeah, it has uh, ripped back, well, uh, up to uh, beyond 120 I think it was there at one point. Uh, FMG's update, you, you summed it up very nicely, you know, uh, a million tons more production, but the problem is that costs are going up. So it doesn't necessarily matter if you produce more, if it's costing you more to do so. This one, as we know, will be all about the iron ore price and the expectations thereof moving forward. Uh, there was an increased number of steel mills in China in the last couple of months, uh, bringing production back online. Of course, we have to get past the Winter Olympics. Uh, in Beijing because uh, there were restrictions on the amount of uh, smelters that could run for, for pollution reasons. Uh, but there is some expectation that there's some restocking going on and then that will accelerate post the Winter Olympics, as I was just saying, and that demand will continue to pick up. So if you believe that and you believe that will be supportive of iron ore prices, which I tend to, then the outlook for Fortescue is probably more positive than negative. Just from a pure price point perspective, though, it is uh, trading right around that $20 mark. Uh, and as we know, big round numbers on charts uh, are oftentimes fairly significant. I'd really like to see it hold here uh, and possibly bounce before putting some money to work. I just need a little bit more evidence rather than less that uh, it's moving in the right direction. Yep. Uh, Scott? I, I quite like Fortescue as a business. I should disclose I own some shares. I bought them at a little bit of a cheaper price than this uh, because I thought that, that you know, the, the pessimism was overdone. The falling yeah. iron ore price was about as silly, or the pessimism around it was probably as silly as the $220 a tonne, you know, optimism that was in the price much earlier, as you saw on that chart. I think that's the, the reality of markets. They do overreact, as we've already talked about. Um, I, I like the, the business more broadly. Chris is absolutely right about some of the short-term pressures. Um, but as he says, if you, if you like the longer-term story, then it's absolutely appropriate to look through some of those and say, what does the long-term look like? The Chinese concern for me is probably the predominant one. If there is meaningfully lower iron ore demand out of China permanently, or at least the growth is lower, uh, then it does probably pit the big four against each other to try and get that volume. If the volume keeps growing, then it's probably good news for iron ore demand more broadly. Um, Chris is right, the costs are going up. By the same token, when you're mining it at a C1 cost of $15 or $15.50, and selling it for 80 something, uh, there's plenty of opportunity for margin. That's not the full cost, of course, but it shows you the size of the potential prize mm. there at a gross level. Um, so I, I, like, I like the business. I like what they're doing. The Fortescue Future Industries thing is going to be interesting. They're desperately trying to get into hydrogen. Uh, they bought the Williams uh, Racing Team business uh, to try and get more battery yeah. technology. So what Twiggy's trying to do here is really useful in terms of the Fortescue Future Industries business. A couple of things to think of, though. Firstly, it could come to absolutely nothing. So be very, very careful you're not buying into the full dream of that. There might be some upside, but don't buy the dream. Second is it interesting to see how the market treats the FFI business as it becomes larger. If you're a resources investor, if you're an iron ore investor and you bought Fortescue for the iron, you're seeing all the headlines, all the stories, and frankly, most of Twiggy's attention on this new bit of business, you might start to wonder, A, is it the business I really bought? B, am I comfortable with the business or the management being potentially distracted by that? They will say they're not, of course, and that's probably true. But you start to think about how investors might start pricing this business when it becomes a jack of all trades, master of none. If it's no longer an iron ore business only, it's not quite a renewables business, how do you how do you price those things? It can get interesting for the market. Now, as an investor, you don't need to worry about what the market does necessarily. What I think you might find over the next year or two is some volatility in the share price as, as the market tries to work out what Fortescue is moving forward. Is it a renewables business with an iron ore rump? Is it an iron ore business with a, a fantastical renewables dream that may never be fulfilled? 
that that kind of you know the prevailing view will probably determine the price in the medium term so just be a little bit mindful of that i do think it's probably a market beta from here uh, but as the price continues to rise and again as the iron ore price fluctuates the upside is less obvious and as chris mentions um, whether it manages manage to continue recovery from the current price or not is probably one worth watching okay so buying at these levels i think i would just right. uh but i don't think it'd be much higher before i'd say we move to a hole personally yeah. And as long as they keep paying the dividends. That helps. <laughs> it's becoming <laughs> exactly. a cash cow at the moment, is it? Blimey. Totally.